Are there any makers of zero point energy or free energy generators in the world presently? No. Will there be in the future? Yes. And what guidance can you give to humanity to help us move to there? The key to zero point energy is to stop looking at it as a mm, continuation of that which you presently know as energy. Mm. Consider that presently your energy is mm, based on either electric or magnetic or electromagnetic. Mm. And so the result is, or even nuclear, and nuclear energy of course is then translated into electric or magnetic. The key here for you to realize is that there are other forms of energy. If you really want to look at zero-point energy and to create this, you must be willing to look beyond the limitations that you've established for yourselves as to what is energy. That's the key question to ask. You begin with that premise and then you move forward from there. Now, if you begin with that premise and of course you limit it with based on your psychologies and belief structures as the, to that which you presently know, then you'll simply end up in the same dead end that which you've ended up with so far. To move beyond it, you must be willing to open yourselves to different ideas and different constructs of energy. And we don't mean here solar or wind energy, though to a degree they too are different. Um, there are other types of energy still available that would lead you to zero point energy. Do you think? Mm -hmm. And will the exploration of energy being love help? Mm -hmm. In part, yes. But there are, before you get to that point, there are different types of energies that we're talking about as well. And that has to be explored. Okay. Would you be willing to share any of those right now? No. <coughs> For if we do, it would simply limit the exploration. Mm -hmm. If this was created, how would that change our world? Mm, you would be able to mm, provide energy to humanity from a different perspective free, freely. And, but the difficulty is that in order to get there, you must realize that anyone that controls energy now wouldn't want this done, is it? Okay. Have there been the uh, generators created before that were just hidden and... No. No. Okay. Next question is, will 3D printing be the next big thing in America? And what company would be a good investment? 3D printing or 3 printing? 3D printing. Hmm. There are a number of, hmm. yes, we see that 3D printing can have great benefit to humanity. And it'll provide um, a good um, foundation, for example, for um, printing um, body parts um, that are at this point um, in, in high demand but with low supply, such as uh, livers, lungs, uh, hearts, things of that nature. To get to that point, however, more development has to be made. Now, in addition to that, of course, there are presently a number of 3D printers that are being created to print the things that in, are enjoyable and pleasurable for humanity. Uh, articles, um, uh, food, things of that nature. But the main thing to realize is that the main um, company that will eventually mm, uh, be the, call it the one that will be the, the greatest supplier of 3D printing, will eventually be companies such as Hewlett Packard. And we're saying such as, so that you don't think that it's Hewlett Packard in itself. Uh, there's Hewlett Packard is a possibility. Mm, uh, Samsung, surprisingly enough, will get into it, and so will Sony. And there's a number of other companies that are very much into printing as well. Uh, Xerox, for example. Uh, so we're not going to give you which one is the best to invest in, for that would then limit your free will and free choice, but those are some of the ones that we would look, suggest you look at. So it's going to be an established company? And very much. They will buy the technology from others, and then they have the marketing resources to make it available to the world. Is it? Can the wonders comment on empowerment of children within humanity? From which perspective? Any guidance you can offer to, for example, those in 
the best way to empower a child is the moment that they are born to greet them with the word greetings. As they come out of the womb, as the head is poking out, so to speak, that is the moment to say greetings. Yes, it is a benefit as well to wait until after the baby is born, out of the womb and into the hands of the mother, to say greetings. But it would be best to say it as the head comes out. Now, if it's the feet that come out first, you can still say greetings. And it isn't the question of the head is better than the feet. You see? Now, if it's a cesarean section, then of course, again, the moment the doctors pull the child out, greetings. Now, from that perspective then, if it is an impossibility to do so, then use the word greetings the earliest you can. Teach the child that word. Greet that child, especially as an infant from the time they are born to approximately seven to eight months of, of life, do it on a daily basis and you'll find the child blossoming, growing, establishing themselves very clearly. Now, if that is not available, for example, and the child is long past that particular moment in time and space and you still haven't used the word greetings, then please do so at the earliest possible opportunity. And if the child is 35 or 40 or 45, <laughs> use the word greetings. Now, it won't have the same impact at 35, 40, or 45 that it would have as an infant, but it will begin the process of shifting and altering the psychology and the belief structure of the individual such that then they can begin to recognize their own sufficiency. And once that is done, then choice is simply uh, around the corner then. To move into a way to empower children, do it that way, and recognize that each child mm, is simply an individual within a small body, not mm, a child versus an adult. Mm, they are individuals, they are soul essences, they are egos and personalities. And yes, they don't have the experience mm, that an older individual does have, but they do have the ability to reason, to judge, and to choose and recognize that and respect that and you'll find that you will empower them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And by saying greetings to the individual, does their relationship to fear change? Mm -hmm. That's for their choice. The word greetings allows, opens them to the probability of the awareness, rephrase, the awareness that they are sufficient, that they are all that there is. Then from there, they must choose. Look at yourselves. How many times have we suggested, have we said to you, greetings, and yet still you choose mm, to contract, to harm yourselves, to fear, to judge? Yes, that's changing. Yes, it's growing. Yes, from your perspectives, you've shifted and altered, but there's still more to do, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Now, an individual, a child, an infant, newly born, hasn't yet fully judged. Has judged but not to the degree that you have. And so the result in it is, when you say greetings to them, it moves through that particular layer of judgment and immediately allows an infant, the individual, to realize their sufficiency. And from there, if it is repeated and repeated, then it is reinforced. Do you think? Mm -hmm. um, what are the Sasquatch or Bigfoot, and what is their origin? Humanoids, the same as you, and their origins are the same as yours. They simply come from a different line, if you want to call it that. In the series that we've created on the origins of humanity, in fact, we do discuss that particular aspect uh, and allude to it at least. And if you consider that the Lemurians are the ones that populated that particular portion of the world, then you'll realize that the origins are Lemurian. Do you think? Mm -hmm. So they are naturally evolved on this planet? Of course. Okay, and what is their lifespan? Mm, approximately 40 to 50 years. 
Mm. Oh wow, so it's shorter than ours. Mm -hmm. Well, they live uh, in a different world than you do, is it? What do you mean by that? Mm, they live in, in an environment that is very harsh to their bodies. The outdoors? Very much. You take your bodies and you mm, cater them, you mm, baby them, you take care of them. The Sasquatch are not in that position at this point. They are living against, from nature, with nature. Do you think? And why haven't they come out to society and changed? There aren't that many of them in the first place. In the second place, they really don't, they fear humanity for they have been hunted and they have been killed by humans. Do you think? Mm -hmm. There is um, a video, uh, a footage of a Sasquatch from, I think it's the year 1967. Yes. Known as the Patterson footage. Yes. Is that a real Sasquatch? No. Ah. Mm -hmm. So it's a hoax? Yes. Mm -hmm. A very well presented hoax, but still a hoax. Okay. Um, so are, are Sasquatch really that big and that hairy? Very much. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. Look at how hairy you are. and You're not even a Sasquatch. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. Okay. Interesting. So they're basically just a tribe. Like There are tribes in the world that haven't really been in contact with. Yes. The main society. Mm, the Sasquatch have been in contact with humanity and they've avoided them for that particular reason. Okay. Great. And are there any actual, um, is there any footage of them that's actually real? There is one, mm, but it is so well hidden that no one knows of it. Mm -hmm. And when does, where do they live primarily? Mostly on the northwestern coast of the North uh, uh, North American continent, as well in parts of Siberia and, and Russia. Huh. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Eastern coast of Russia. Are they also the Yeti? Mm -hmm. Same mm, uh, same line, mm, different mm, families. Mm -hmm. They called by a number of different names. Is it? Mm -hmm. Same line. Got it. So how many are there? In, in the world? Mm -hmm. Approximately 2,112 right now. Okay. Great. Then we do thank you. Mm -hmm. To you all, the appreciation of all. The appreciation, the appreciation of all. Of all May I move to end this session? Please. Please perform all healings that are chosen. None. Please relax the body to its natural state now. And to you all, the appreciation of all. The appreciation, the appreciation of all members. I would like Renee to awake feeling completely loved now. Okay, one well, of that session um, was kind of interesting because I saw all kinds of ideas about energy. It was like I'm looking at energy and I was like, this not, there's electrical, there's magnetic, there's solar, there's wind, and all of that is energy in the sense of it powers something. But it was interesting to see that there is a latent, nascent, passive energy that exists everywhere that we're not tapping into. And it's not wind and it's not solar. That's, that's all I got. Thank you.